the other bed. This is a this is the beginning of the ride. We're just cruising up Greenhill Road with the lads. Um, I decide that you know I, I want to push it a little bit, so I just zoom across past these riders. They just sort of stopped the team car. Well, some of them did, some of them didn't. Uh, but yeah, it was a good good ride with the lads. Um, did get dropped, but this was this was I didn't get dropped on this part, so this was good. Uh, Egan Bernal hit a nineteen fifty, like twenty fourth or something up here. He was really going for it, um, especially the second half. I just stayed at the back. I didn't really want to be too rude or anything. A couple of riders, I think, overstepped the mark a bit, which I'll point out. I think you just have to remember on these rides to be super respectful. Like These are the top 600 cycles in the world, if not better, uh, what they do. So, you know, it's a, it's a massive privilege to ride with these guys. So you just, if they want to do something, if they want you don't want you to ride in their wheel, well, just don't ride in their wheel. Like, um, I mean, that's one thing to remember, that these guys are training for a race um, and... They need. To, they they want to do what they want to do. Like you shouldn't interfere. You should just observe, be the fly on the wall, as people say. But you can see here, everyone goes their own pace often on the climbs. I think that's one thing I found. Like the lighter climbers will just go at their own pace, which obviously will be faster than some of the bigger riders. So you can see I'm on uh, John Dibman's wheel now. Uh, he's got. He's a pretty chunky rider, to be honest. He's a former track rider. He was a world champion in the uh, in the Omnium, I think it was. No, points race, points race uh, in London in 2016, I think it was. Uh, so yeah, but he's a, he's a solid rider. I think he was just going not too hard. Uh, I don't think he, I don't think this is anywhere near his threshold. This is probably like mm, mid zone three, probably for him. Maybe 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 low zone three. Uh, he's this is definitely harder pace than what a lot of them have been climbing at before. Uh, but it's nothing crazy. So you think I'm sixty kilos here? So I'm doing about four and a half. So he's oh seventy five something. So it's probably about three hundred watts for him. So it's. I mean, he probably is a threshold about 400 for or so. So, yeah, probably is zone three or whatever. He's just checking out, making sure that everyone's okay. Almost gets hit by a car. Uh, that's uh, the risk that pro riders take. Um, well, not, they don't take it on purpose, but that's just what happens when you ride on the open road. Uh, but, yeah, you can, Green Hill's a good road climb. It's about 20 minutes for a fast time. Uh, I think the record's about 18-something, 18-something, 17-something something, 17 something with, uh, with Brendan Cansey. Uh, but otherwise... I think we did a 23 minutes, so we were, we're not going too hard. He, he surged a lot, um, Dibbon. He sort of sometimes would go quite hard up to 350, and then I'm not sure if it's because he wanted to drop us or what, but I mean, I was. it was one of those things where here I was like, oh, well, I probably could go faster, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't, wasn't going to get dropped, to be honest. Uh, you'll see a couple of riders come round or whatever because they'd stopped at the bottom, uh, but I think Dibbon was just, yeah, chilling out. Uh, he was probably got there. 30 seconds to a minute behind everyone else, and then obviously like three or four minutes behind Bernal, who really did hit it. Um, and then we just stopped at the top, regrouped, um, and then rolled on. So you can see, I'm pretty sure that's Chris Lawless or Wisniewski. Um, so you can see there's another couple of riders here, um, and I think here that guy should have he should have um, just fallen off the wheel a bit and just let Divin if he wanted to uh, like draft behind him, because uh, you'll see in a moment he sort of pushes this guy off the wheel like I want to be here. Um, because it's their training ride, I think that's the thing. It's like, just don't interfere. If they want to do something, just just let them do it. Like here, it's like, what are you doing? You're you're in the team sky train, and you're some fucking shitty amateur who's gonna get dropped in like ten minutes. Like, it's just a bit disrespectful, I think. Um, unfortunately for me, I end up getting a rubbish camera angle for the for the rest of it because this random bloke decides to be in front. I try and do as much riding not behind him as possible because obviously, who wants to watch this when we've got team sky blokes up the road? But um, so you'll see. This the guy ahead. He, I, I don't know. He got dropped before. He's not. He's not super strong. I mean, he he rides for Sassy, which is the South Australian Sports Institute. But I think, yeah, I don't know what he's doing to be honest. Um, anyway, not to dwell on that too long. It was really nice. Really nice doing climbs with these guys. Um, they, they tr all maintain a high-ish cadence, but I'd say it's it's not as high. So there's Lawless, I think, who just sort of went past, and I think Dibbon go, uh, Duel goes past in a bit. I probably could have stayed with them, but I, I just wanted to be respectful and not, not really like do anything too too bad. Uh, but maybe in future I should. Uh, there's the Rod Allingworth and the lads. Um, Rod Allingworth was actually quite a friendly guy who talked to me for a bit, um, which is nice. So you can see that guy zooms up the road, um, which again, it, it's sort of just like, I don't know, maybe it's okay. Maybe I'm overplaying it, but leave what you think in the Always just leave what you think in the uh, comments down below. But anyway, Divin's now just upping it a little bit, up to 400 almost. Um, so this is nowhere near race pace, to be honest. Um, this is just a casual pace for them. Um, I was working decently hard, but again, it wasn't like one of those things where 
like um, like later on where I was really going for it. Um, so again, here it's like that guy's trying to train, like get out of the way. He's a pro tour rider. <laughs> He's a world tour rider. Like move. Um, but I guess maybe they didn't see. I don't know. Uh, but I was always at the back, pretty much. Um, and then if anyone wanted to overtake, they could. But here I should have just stayed in his wheel and just budged those people off, or for the viewers. But alas, I wasn't that rude. Um, so you can see, like, it's not it's not super hard uh, to stay with the pros. I'd say, like, you need to be decent thin. It's like four, four and a half watts per kilo probably for. T I think what do we do? We need about two seventy, two seventy watts for this whole climb. So that's like four point six, four point seven watts per kilo. Which is, yeah, it's not too hard, like, let's be honest. Um, for Obviously, if you're a heavy rider, it might be a little bit harder, but for someone who's trained for a bit, it's not it's not crazy wattage at all, really. Um, it's more it's more like afterwards you feel a bit cooked, uh, which I did, and I definitely think on the team time trial, that's why I was a bit weak, and I got dropped, because uh, this effort was a bit harder than normal. But the thing I noticed with the teams is that they all do different things. Uh, at the beginning, some of them like to ride hard, some of them don't. So Sky had done more longer yesterday, which is why I chose them, because I wanted to do a bit of a rest today, but um, I think they're obviously having a hard block. Maybe tomorrow they'll have another hard block, and then Saturday they'll rust up, or or maybe they'll have a rest tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure. It's hard to tell. So this guy gets popped, so I, I tell him, don't get dropped or whatever, but he's, um, I don't know what he said. He says something back, but anyway. So you can see we're now rolling up again. Uh, there's like a decent distance between them, but between the two riders, who I think is Lawless and Divin, uh, and then you can see Duel, I think, is really up. Oh, no, it might be Wisniewski. The problem is it's really confusing because from the GoPro angle, you can't really see what the riders think because it's, like, on the top of their, like, halfway up their jersey, pretty much. It says their name, which is quite nice. But because they're, they're so aero, it's really hard to see from here. But when you're riding, it's quite good because you can see all the riders. Which I think is quite a nice touch because some teams, like, Katusha, you could see it. But quick step, I have no idea who they were. And it's, like, for a bit of self-marketing, like, it's quite good to... It's quite good to be able to like see, like show off your name, show off who you are, like, and then maybe just to potential like future teams or whatever, or people who want to do individual sponsorship deals. Uh, so I think Sky, it's good they do that. What do you think of their white kit? They, I, I'm a big fan of it. I think I think the black is not good really for visibility, but also just like you get quite hot in the summer. It's just not really like an ideal kit. Uh, their bikes, the Pinarol F10s, none of them running discs, all running about C40s or C60 Duro races. I think. A lot of the heavy riders uh, were riding C C sixties, I think. I think uh, Dibham was on the rear, but uh, I'd say it's probably six out of eight were riding C forties both. Uh, or maybe he is riding C forties. It's it's hard to tell um, exactly. They roll quite nice. They sound quite good. I mean, their carbon wheels, the Dura Race, they're not really going to be bad, are they? Let's be honest. Um, so as you can see here that they they're sort of like a. It's not chasing each other, but it's just a bit of motivation to keep pushing. You see that? I'm not sure if Dim was angry or not, but he kept on looking around. Maybe it was just to see if we get dropped or not. I don't, maybe he wasn't very happy with us staying on, because he didn't look in great condition, to be honest. Uh, he didn't look in, like, lean world tour condition. Uh, but maybe maybe like, he was just putting that on. I don't know, but he looked not super lean. I'd say one thing with Team Sky, I definitely noticed they're not as lean as other teams, but I think that's because they had a lot of younger riders. So uh, they haven't well, they haven't been exposed to, there's dual going past, pretty chilled. They haven't been exposed to like the same number of kilometers and hard races that the um, other people have. And they also obviously haven't taken some of the drug cycles or whatever that the other riders have who are a bit older. Uh, so Ergen Bernal was definitely the leanest. Obviously he's a climber, but he, he did just seem a lot leaner than everyone else. And the newer pros, Definitely did seem a bit like thicker, especially Halverson was like his legs were pretty thick to be honest. Um, like probably similar leanness to the guy ahead of us, maybe. Mm, yeah, probably about the same. Maybe a little little less lean uh, was Halverson, but obviously he can kick out a mean sprint, uh, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter that much at the end of the day. Um, so you can see that they keep their body pretty upright, all the riders, or um, when they're climbing, it's not not too aero. But they're very, very still. Like when you look at look at Dribben, he has quite a high seat post to be honest. Like quite a high seat post. But I'd say it's it's probably it's probably the right place. Maybe you could knock it down a couple mil. I'd say. But he he looks very controlled in that position. Uh, he doesn't look doesn't look challenging at all. Uh, he looks looks like he hold this all day, which I guess is the difference because they can do so much work before the bike, um, off the bike, so they do a lot of back stretching and core stability. They can hold positions very, very still, um, which is, I think, definitely a difference between amateur. Amateurs often look not uncomfortable on the bike, but just a bit like they're not born on the bike. They're not like, 
ready. They just they look a bit odd. Um, having said that, Chris Room obviously looks a bit weird on the bike, but he's a super strong rider, so it's not all that. But I think definitely the the you can tell that the pro riders really um, can spend could spend like all day on the drops, bent elbows, super aero, and that will be fine for them, uh, which is which is definitely a change. Um, do they get back problems? I don't think they do, just because they're used to the position. Um, I think if you were the average weekend warrior, put one of their positions, 130 step, stem with minus, minus 10 degree uh, on the stem, then yeah, you probably would have it, have some problems. But you can see the cadence is, it's not, it's not super high. I think 39, 28, I believe was what they're running. Uh, so that was probably probably like low enough for here but not super low and also some people like when they're hitting low numbers uh which obviously they are for Dibbon um because he's a he's a world class rider uh they just prefer using a slightly lower cadence but I know obviously on the track he spins really high cadence because all, all track riders do because it's just way more efficient um and something you just get used to doing on the tracks if you want to go faster you've got to spin faster that's the only way you can do it um so I don't know if you have any questions let me know um what it's like riding with pro teams. I mean, I, tr I try to explain it. It's pretty chill most of the time. You might get dropped if they're doing some efforts or whatever, but if you see one, they're normally pretty friendly guys, just joking around. Like, they don't, I, don't, I don't think they take tour down under too seriously, a lot of them, so uh, they don't really mind um, doing whatever with you, uh, just with you watching, observing. It's just really, really interesting seeing uh, like how they ride, what gears they use, like how much they eat, how much they drink, like, it's just really useful and you can just think about what they do and what you do and how you can get better. Um, so I think we're coming to the end of the video now. Uh, so cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next vid. Bye.